people tend to identify, you know, yourself with digital storytelling. And it, every time that you mention or that you say your name, Joe Lambert equals digital storytelling. How would you define yourself? I think of myself mainly as a teacher, mm -hmm. like a practitioner. I mean, and, and the writing I do, I don't try to theorize that much mm -hmm. about what I do and why I do it. I, I just, I enjoy teaching and getting people to make stuff. Mm -hmm. So in some ways I like that metaphor as I'm just kind of a tra traveling country mm -hmm. teacher and I teach this particular mm -hmm. approach and then people get excited about it and go with it. I don't think of myself as the leader of anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think of this as a movement in that sense mm -hmm. and that I, I, I know really good leaders who have really broad perspectives mm -hmm. and, and maybe grounded in a theoretical construct. Mm -hmm. But I leave that to my colleagues at universities to look at what I've done and make theories about it rather than me having to bother to make theories right. about it. So just to, uh, you don't think of yourself as a creator? You're more no, a I mean, not, or I, I definitely, than exactly. I mean, I, I don't present myself as mm -hmm. being very different than the kind of people mm -hmm. that take the workshop, mm -hmm. meaning I was somebody that really didn't see much value in my own story. I didn't naturally want to be mm. an artist in front of the camera or, you know, in, on mm -hmm. stage. Uh, my own reticence mm -hmm. about my own life in, inspires me to work with other people who are reticent about their lives. So right. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of the anti-celebrity of celebrities. I mean, if okay. that's possible. Thank you. In digital storytelling, there is clearly a mix of public and, and private. Um, do you see it as a danger or rather as an opportunity? Yeah, I mean, these are double-edged swords. I think I said today that there's, there's a part of our need to break down um, silence that happens because of cultural um, mm -hmm. histories. And then a lot of them had to do with power. So there's power in the family and the father can speak and the family can't speak. There's power mm -hmm. in our communities where the priests and mm -hmm. the politicians can speak but the people can't speak and the idea of of bringing some of our stories that have been silenced out is mm -hmm. a is is privacy but it's also a kind of empowerment through exposing the truth of what's mm -hmm. going on having said that the border of protecting mm -hmm. one's privacy mm -hmm. and the ability to decide culturally in a community what's sacred what's um, important that's for your community or for your mm -hmm. uh, larger sense of self and uh, relationship to others as well as your individual privacy those things are being threatened by mm -hmm. technologies that are being used by the state that are being used by mm -hmm. businesses and governance to, get, to follow us on the internet and mm -hmm. find out what we want to buy and what we want to do to me that's a completely different public private question and and obviously I stand with people who are trying to pref kind of protect individual sovereignty as mm -hmm. well as community sovereignty in relationship to that we hold sacred mm -hmm. and that we are not sharing out of context or certainly being mm -hmm. used to undermine our autonomy as citizens. Right? Mm -hmm.